Two thoughts we'd like to start with. We believe it is the hunter's job to kill an animal instantly with the first shot. We also believe that the hunter owes it to the animal to accomplish that. And look, if you're not 100% certain, get closer or don't shoot, at least until you're 100% sure. As said best by our friend Gray Thornton, the essence of hunting is not measured by inches or points, but rather by the spirit of the chase and the noble nature of the game pursued. You should be proud of the fact that you've taken your valuable time and hard-earned money to become a better hunter and thus better prepared for your upcoming hunts. Hunting is a great way to challenge yourself, and yes, it offers many rewards, not the least of which it provides you with the opportunity to spend time in, learn more about, and to gain respect in the good Lord's beautiful outdoors and creatures. And of course, there's always the making of new friends and seeing areas of the world that most people would never experience if just sightseeing. We have seen some amazing things while guiding clients and hunting around the globe ourselves. One of the most upsetting things we see frequently is how some sportsmen behave while hunting or fishing. Here are just a couple of examples. How about the sportsman who laughs at or even shrugs off the wounding of an animal, not being upset at all that they just caused one of God's amazing creatures to suffer? Or rude behavior with complete disregard for all the folks who have worked so hard to ensure you're having a great time and keep you safe on your hunt. Folks, we have to be honest and tell you, we see this very often from Americans, and it is unfair to those in camp, the guests, and the staff. It frankly ruins the whole hunting experience for all those involved. It also gives hunters, who already have enough bad press, a poor name and tarnishes our reputation. Next, we want to give you some of our thoughts on ways to continue being a good hunting steward. All of this, of course, is covered in your SAM manual. Please refer to it often. Hunting comes with a great responsibility. Here are just a few suggestions and observations to help you make the most out of your hunts and ensure you are a good hunting steward. We often see communication or lack of as the cause of most issues on any hunt. They can happen before getting there or, or upon arrival. You likely have used an agent or met the outfitter before going. Be honest and tell them your limitations and concerns. Oftentimes, hunters overbook themselves. You must know your limitations and book accordingly. Do your research. If you're capable of making a 200 yard shot on a deer, that does not make you capable of making a long shot 550 yard plus on a Marco Polo sheep in extreme conditions. If you have bad knees and cannot walk more than a half a mile without taking pain pills and a two hour rest, for goodness sakes, don't book an elephant hunt without explaining your limitation to the outfitter first. An honest outfitter will likely explain that this is not the right hunt for you. And don't book that horseback elk hunt and have zero experience with horses. You will not enjoy that hunt at all. Most problems on any hunt can be prevented by open and honest conversation between client and outfitter long before the hunt. While on your hunt, you'll become a part of a team with each member serving a very distinct role. The captain of this team will be your professional hunter or guide, and his roles are many. He will develop the hunt plan for the day, direct stalks, judge trophy quality, move you into position for the shot, and manage the recovery process. But he has many other responsibilities that you may or may not even see during your hunt. He's a bush mechanic, a gunsmith, a bartender, logistics manager, a bodyguard, social director. He'll oversee trophy care, settle staff disputes, and play doctor to just to name a few. And a helping hand from you will help build the bond that will make your hunt even more enjoyable. Another key member on any African safari, extreme weather, or mountain hunt are the tracker, assistants, or wrangler, and their role will vary based on the type of hunt you're on. On many hunts, their main responsibility will be to spot game, their knowledge of the game and ability to spot it at incredible distances or in the heaviest cover will play a major role in the success of your hunt. On dangerous game hunts that require true tracking, 
For example, buffalo or even elephant, their job is to find, read, and follow spore. When you look back on your hunt, you'll remember watching these masters practicing their ancient art as a high point of your hunting experience. On any hunt around the world, these assistant team members will be a vital part of your success. They will ensure your camp is set up, your transportation is ready to go, and will perform many other duties as required. Offering to assist them from time to time will pay huge dividends. In many areas, you'll be accompanied by a government or landowner game scout. Their primary responsibility is to observe and ensure that you're obeying the game laws in the area you're hunting. In our experience, you'll find most of the game scouts to be enjoyable companions who assist in everything from spotting and tracking to game recovery. Now let's look at your role as the hunting client. Your primary responsibility is to stay focused and to make a clean, effective, and humane killing shot when the opportunity presents itself. While you will not be expected to pitch in on every task, a helping hand and willing attitude will go a long way to ensuring that you're thought of as part of the team, as you should be. PHs, guides, and assistants are human beings who share the normal range of emotions. And while they work hard for every client, the little bit of extra effort they put forth for a really good client can often be the difference on your hunt. A typical day on any hunt begins well before first light. The hunting day will be designed around the type of hunt you're on. On a typical safari, spot and stalk hunting is the preferred technique. A safari vehicle will normally be used to access game country. Sometimes game will be spotted at a distance from the vehicle. Other times you will walk to a vantage point and glass for game. On North American or Asian hunts, you normally are hunting specific species, trying to get into good positions to spot your quarry. Oftentimes, the ride to the potential hunting area could be several hours of driving or riding, and then even walking and hiking. Work hard, it'll pay off. Most clients have primary species they wish to target, but many of our favorite trophies were taken during unexpected chance encounters, and the wise hunter takes advantage of good fortune when it presents itself. By working hard, you will most often create your own luck. So you just arrived in camp and your guide or PH has been there for weeks and perhaps months hunting this area. Let's say you tell him you want a minimum of a 350 elk. Now a veteran guide will smile and say, we'll sure give it a try in the next seven days of hunting. But he is smart enough not to say, oh, no problem. So the next morning, an hour out of camp, up ahead in the meadow, stands your 350 class bull. And it might be tempting to think, man, this is just day one. Maybe we should pass and wait for something bigger. And you know the rest of the story. You hunt your butt off for the next six and a half days and the biggest bull you see is about 270 inches. Don't be that hunter that refuses to believe their good luck. Even before you shake hands with your professional hunter or guide when stepping off the airplane, take my word on it. They are fully aware that you want to shoot the biggest trophies. And guess what? So do they. But their experience tells them that not every animal taken on every hunt will be of gold medal quality or reside in the top 10 of some record book. Some areas are just known to produce top quality trophies for certain species, while other species in the same area very rarely exceed animal minimum record book standards. On your hunt is not the place for the tape measure. The best way to alienate your PH or guide is to convince him that no animals taken, no matter the quality of the hunt, the stalk or even the shot, will have value to you unless it achieves certain status in the record book. Pass when he says pass, shoot when he says shoot, and enjoy the experience you've come so far to live. The most important thing you can pack in your hunt doesn't go in your duffel bag or your gun case. It's between your ears and it's a positive attitude. All good hunts are a series of ups and downs. There will be days that you may not even see game or even find fresh tracks to follow. Other days you'll spot game around every bend in the road. You'll make some awful shots, then you'll turn around and make a shot that would make a sniper jealous. Sunburn, flies, cold, rain, bucking horses, flat tires are all part of the hunt. So accept them as part of the experience. It's really good advice to never judge any hunt at any single point during the hunt. That can only be done fairly 
as the sun sets on the last day. The subject of tipping can be a very slippery slope, but it's part of the hunting experience. Tipping is a time-honored tradition, and Americans are found to be very generous around the world. It's an important source of income to your team. Your booking agent and hunting operator can be a great source of information as to the budget for your tips. They can advise you of the average tips for the type of hunt you're going on, and you can then go up or down depending on your level of satisfaction. You will find the service provided on most hunts will far exceed your expectations, and the tip you'll leave will be well-deserved. Every hunt requires a certain level of physical conditioning. Few African safaris require that you be in marathon shape, but your ability to walk comfortably will enhance your safari experience. This is especially true on hunts for elephants and buffalo, where you'll be required to follow tracks. The best exercise that you can do prior to your safari is simple walking with your gun or something similar, even a 10-pound pipe if necessary. Mountain hunting is where physical conditioning comes into play. Leg strength, lung capacity is everything on these mountain hunts. In your SAM manual, under Staying SAM Ready, we have many great ideas to help you prepare. Gun safety is the number one priority on any hunt. Your hunting team knows from experience that their greatest danger isn't a grizz, a wounded lion, or buffalo you may be forced to follow, but it is the rifle in the hands of a careless client. Everyone who has completed a SAM course is fully aware of the need for safe gun handling. Each client must commit to these principles every moment on a hunt. And remember, muzzle discipline is everything. A quick word on packing and equipment for your hunt. Your booking agent or hunting operator will provide you with a suggested list of items that you'll need for your hunt. It's been carefully developed over the years and it's wise to adhere to it. Today's airline weight restrictions are even more reason to travel light, so be careful and resist the urge to overpack. The final two bits of hunting stewardship we'd like to talk about are really ticklish subjects. The first one is firing a backup shots and the second is follow up on wounded animals. Let's deal first with this business of backup shots. We hear folks go on hunts and they tell their PH or guide under no circumstances do I want you to fire at my animal. I have to tell you, we think this is really foolish. A wounded animal is a terrible thing. And in today's hunting world, it's going to go on your license. And that may be the only animal of that species you're allowed to hunt. The other thing is you've hired a professional hunter you've done your research, you've checked your references, and you know that you've hired an experienced professional. He's got his professional hunter's license or his guide license that he's studied and worked really hard for. He's earned it. You're paying him for his wisdom. You're paying him for his judgment, and you really need to let him use it. Now, a good professional hunter or guide absolutely wants you to take your animals. He doesn't want to fire, and unless you tell him to, he's not going to fire unless it's absolutely necessary. And then you need to give him that latitude. We have always said that our ego is not as important as having to follow wounded game and perhaps lose that animal and possibly get someone even killed. The truth is, especially with brown bears and buffalo, which are both so incredibly strong and dangerous, when wounded, the chance of a deadly confrontation is always possible. But the reality is with buffalo, elephant, and even with lion and leopard, the most likely result of a wounded animal isn't a charge, but that the animal will never be seen again. We strongly recommend giving your PH the latitude to use his judgment and fire that backup shot as required. You may follow the track to the down animal and find out that his shot wasn't even necessary at all. And that's just fine. You can talk about that later but give him that latitude. That's what he's there for. That's his job. He's responsible for the party. He's responsible for the safety of everyone, including you. So if he needs to fire that backup shot, let him do it. This last comment only applies to dangerous game. Dangerous game is sometimes going to have to be followed up. Now, it really doesn't matter whether the animal's dead in the bush or whether he's out there waiting for you. Once that animal goes out of sight with a bullet in him, you have a potentially wounded animal and you've got a recovery job on your hands. 
Your professional hunter or guide has the license and he has the training. He also has a lot better knowledge of the train beyond the wall of brush. He's also had a lot of time on the hunt to evaluate you, your shooting, your experience, your safe gun handling. He's got to make a judgment call. He's responsible for the safety of everybody. He has to make a decision as to how the follow-up should be conducted. This is totally and completely his call to make. You may want to go, and you may not want to go. And if you do go, you may well wish you had it. And folks, let's talk about another really ticklish subject here, and that's called social media. Folks, we live in a different time today. There's a lot of different pressures and people can see things that you didn't intend them to see. Be careful of your trophy photos. Let's be sensitive to other people. And look, nobody wants to see a film of cattle being slaughtered in an abattoir, and many people around the world don't want to see pictures of dead animals. This is your hunt. It's your life experience. Keep it to yourself and amongst your family members. And be very careful what you post. Let's not arm our enemies or the people that are against hunting. There's enough people mad at hunters already. And folks, let's talk about paying it forward. Look, hunting's a wonderful way to spend time with the family and your loved ones. And we're under a lot of pressure from non-hunters and anti-hunters, etc. Remember to take a child or a young person hunting along with you. Get the family involved in it. Be proud of it. Get kids involved. Get the young people involved. Get your family involved. And again, be careful with what you do in posting social media, but be proud of what you do and pay it forward. We want to thank you again for attending the SAM course. For those of you that are embarking on your first or even your 25th big game hunt, you're in for a wonderful treat. You're going to have the time of your life and you're going to come back with memories that will last for a lifetime. And most importantly, we hope at SAM we've been able to contribute to your future hunting experiences.